Hey everybody, this is Nat from Plainly, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to cut videos using FFmpeg. So even though I'm an X-Motion designer and my first thought to anything related to video is to open up After Effects or Premiere Pro, cutting videos with FFmpeg is like 100 times better because I don't have to open a very slow video editing tool which has to re-render the video and then give me my cut. I can just pass my video to FFmpeg, tell FFmpeg what are the parameters and it will be done hundred times faster. So, okay, let's see how to actually do this. Okay, and I'll, I'll start with FFmpeg and then SS, which will signify the in point of the cut. In our case, I'd, lo I'd like to, that to be five seconds. And the format of this is seconds, minutes, and hours. You can also use just like plain seconds, but I, I love using these precise timestamps because they give me like a clearer view of what I'm actually doing. So the first parameter is add your in point of the cut, that add your input video, which in my case is video one, and then add your out point of the cut. And you'll do that by adding a two parameter and then telling FFmpeg what is the out point of that cut. And in this case, I wanna say, okay, FFpeg, go and find the fifth second and then cut 10 seconds from that fifth second. Okay, so the result should be a 10 second video starting at second five of my input video. And then I only have to add my output video name, which in this case will be video one, cut.mp4, and then just pressing enter, you'll see that FFmpeg is actually doing its thing. All right, FFmpeg is done. And if I check my output video, I can see that I got a 10 second video starting at video five. So all good. But you'll notice that this was kind of slow, okay? It took FFmpeg some time to actually go and find a video and do its cut and then re-encode and compress the video. But there is a much faster way to do it. And this is especially useful when you're dealing with 4K files or longer duration video files, video footage. In that case, what you wanna do is you wanna add a codec copy parameter, which you'll do by adding a C copy. And this will tell FFmpeg, all right, just do not re-encode, do not recompress, do not do anything. Just cut the video and give the output to me. And let me just quickly change the output name. And then if I click enter, you'll see that this was instant. So you'll find this parameter very useful when you're dealing with larger files. And also when you do not want to use effects, when you just want to you know, just cut the video as is. Speaking of effects, let's see how you can actually use effects and also cut videos. So if you want to add effects to your video and also trim it, it's really easy. There is a few things that I should highlight though. The first one is that there is two ways of trimming videos with FFmpeg. I mean, there is two ways that FFmpeg does it. So the first way is input seeking. And the second way is output seeking. And there are a couple of differences between these two. The first one is in the command, okay? So input seeking, you'll add your SS parameter before the input. In output seeking, you'll add the SS parameter after the input. That's the first difference. The second difference is actually the way that FFmpeg does trimming and how it handles timestamps. And this is crucial for effects and especially the kind of effect you're using. So let's say you wanna add captions. In that case, you would use output seeking. Why? Well, it's just because of the way that the output seeking works. Okay, if you add the SS parameter after the input video, FFmpeg will not mess up your timestamps and because captions are related to timestamps and basically function based on these timestamps, that means that your captions and your new video will sync up. You know, because when you're using auto seeking, FFmpeg will first take your video, then add the effects and then cut the video. And this means that your captions will sync up. If you're not using captions and you're using some other effects uh, that are not related to timestamps, then it's okay to use input seeking in this case. And it's actually 
better to use input seeking for some effects like fade in because again we are going back to timestamps if we are using input seeking and we say all right cut the video at second five and then what will happen because we have our uh, video effects parameter here it will then apply the effects after the cut so this means that your fade in will actually start from the start of the new video let me show you this on an example all right i've set up a command which will add a fade in a three second fade in to my cut video and i'm using also output seeking so one more thing i should highlight is that you obviously cannot use codec copy when you're using effects because you cannot just add the effects without re-encoding the video right back to input versus output seeking so i've added my fade in which is three seconds and i've added my output seeking trip all right i click enter and then ffmpeg goes and does its thing so my idea here was okay give me uh, a five second video that has a fade in of three seconds that was my initial idea but i made a mistake because i'm using output seeking so what happens then if i check my video i can see that i'm not getting any fade ins why is that well that's because i'm using output seeking and the fade in was applied first and the fade in is only three seconds and then ffpeg went and seeked the fifth second so the fade in is long gone all right so let's do it one more time but do it in a proper way i'm just going to find the command i typed in earlier and then click enter and you'll actually see that this time we are actually getting good results okay it's done so it took ffmpeg some time to actually um, encode this and add the effects but if i check my output video i can see that all right we have the fade in so it's everything is working as it should so just to recap pay attention to input output seeking uh, depending depending on what effects you're adding but overall this is a very easy and efficient way to cut videos and especially if you're running this on a server and then you can automate this and cut hundreds and thousands of videos in bulk with just a few clicks all right this is the end of the video i hope you like this if you're interested in video automation and this kind of stuff i think you'll also be interested in plainly videos it's a video automation tool that helps you create thousands of videos just with a few clicks check it out on plainlyvideos.com and thank you so much for watching bye